Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. I have been going completely monkey mad recently, as you might have guessed. And if you've been on Twitter, you may have seen I've been picking up an insane amount of stuff for my Super Monkey Ball collection. So I'm very, very excited to do this video where I'll be taking a look at every single game in the Super Monkey Ball series. In part one, I'm going to be taking a look at all of the console games and join me next week for part two where I'll be taking a look at all of the handheld games. So in this video, I kind of want to answer the question, what went wrong with Super Monkey Ball? If you've been aware of the series for a while, you might have realized that the average review score for these games has been going down and down ever since this game here, Super Monkey Ball Adventure. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at every single game in the series and find out exactly what went wrong. So to start the video off, let's first take a look at Monkey Ball, the arcade game, not the GameCube game. So I first played the Monkey Ball arcade game about two years ago now at the arcade club in Manchester. I did a video of it at the time and I'm kind of regretting not taking more footage of the Super Monkey Ball arcade machine. I definitely had a lot of fun playing it though and I was so excited to find it. This was the first and only time that I've ever actually played the original arcade machine. As you can see, it's a very unique looking cabinet with a giant banana as a controller. I really wish I'd gotten more footage from it. If only I knew that two years later I'd be making a video on the series. So if you don't know anything about the Monkey Ball series, as you can probably tell from this gameplay, you don't actually control the character directly. You actually tilt the floor, which causes the ball to roll around on the screen. Amusement Vision did a fantastic job of expanding upon this incredibly simple concept to produce over 90 really fun stages. In the beginner mode, there's 10 very simple stages, then there's the advanced mode with 30 stages and expert mode with 50. If you manage to clear all 50 of the expert levels, you unlock a new master stage. I hate to think how many yen has been spent on this machine trying to unlock the master levels because it's incredibly difficult towards the end of the expert stages. It's almost exactly the same as the GameCube game, but it's missing a few graphics and sounds. It's incredibly fun to play though, especially with the banana shaped controller. I did try and download it to get some footage for this video, but unfortunately I couldn't get the original arcade machine version to work. I did however manage to find a mod that someone's done of the GameCube game, which is what I've used now to capture the footage for this video. So I'm sure you'll agree the arcade game looks amazing and I wish it had come out on the Dreamcast, I really really do. And also coming up later on in this episode I went on a bit of a journey last weekend to find the latest arcade game in the series which is called Ticket Blitz. I asked around on Twitter if anyone knew where one was and there was one locally so stay tuned for that. But for now let's get started by taking a look at the first game in the series which was a GameCube launch game, the original Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> The first time I ever saw this game was on the actual VHS tape that Game & Electronics Boutique were giving away before the launch of the GameCube, and I instantly fell in love with the game. Ever since I was a kid, I've always had an obsession with monkeys. I know that may sound a bit weird, but still to this day, in my parents' loft, there's bin bags full of monkey teddies. I was obsessed with them. So when I saw this game, of course, it's my obsession in game form. It really is. And what an amazing game it is too. So I got Super Monkey Ball for the GameCube on day one along with Sonic Adventure 2, and I couldn't have been happier. I absolutely loved playing the game. I got so good at playing it that I actually ended up unlocking all 10 master stages. I can't get anywhere close to doing that these days. It's just one of those games that I can go back to and play again and again and never get bored of it. Another thing I love about the GameCube version, especially compared to the arcade original, is the music and the atmosphere. I love what they did with the backgrounds in all of the stages. The one with all the restaurants that are sort of floating in space gives it a really cool vibe. And the music really matches this new aesthetic as well, I just absolutely love everything they did with it. And I still think it actually looks really good as well. The graphics that they managed to get out of the GameCube for this game, especially considering it was a launch title, is really, really impressive. And you can definitely tell that this is the team that went on to make the incredible F-Zero GX. So, as you can probably tell, I love everything about the original Monkey Ball game. It's honestly in my top 10 games of all time. Yeah. 
The first two games in the series were directed and produced by Toshiro Nagoshi. He struggled to get the game made in a very short time and with a limited budget, so it's amazing that it turned out as good as it is. Toshiro worked on the first two Monkey Ball games before moving on to the Yakuza series, and subsequently went so far into the Yakuza culture that he began to look like a member. Ready? Not only does it include everything that the arcade version had, but it also includes mini games and party games as well. There's six additional games in this collection, Monkey Billiards, Monkey Bowling, Monkey Golf, Monkey Fight, Monkey Race, and the most famous one of all, Monkey Target. So let's have a look and see what I thought about some of these mini games. Monkey Race. The first one we're looking at here is Monkey Race. This one is basically a Super Monkey Ball version of Mario Kart, complete with power-ups and an entire Grand Prix mode. It actually plays really well. It is kind of strange though, there's no accelerator, instead you hold up on the analog stick to move forward and then move the analog stick left and right to move in those directions. The next one here is Monkey Billiards, and once again of course they took the really simple concept of a monkey and a ball and built a game around it that makes perfect sense. The physics in this game are really good, and I have fond memories of spending many hours playing this as a kid. I won't cover all the mini games because we'll be here forever, but the last one that I wanted to focus on is Monkey Target. This is by far one of the most popular games in the series, and it's been a mainstay in the minigames for many of the games since. The idea is very simple, you basically go off this ramp, open up your ball and then try and parachute down to land on a target as close to the centre as possible. Of course there's a lot of things that can stop you from doing that. The wind changes direction so you have to take that into consideration, and to get the higher scoring targets you have to try and track them down, and they're usually further away or harder to get to. Now the second game in the series, Super Monkey Ball 2. This was actually one of the very first games that I ever spent my own money on to buy pre-owned, and I was slightly let down, I have to be completely honest. I was a huge fan of the original right from when I picked it up on launch day, absolutely blown away by everything the game did, so of course I was very very excited to get the sequel. But unfortunately it didn't quite live up to my expectations. For one thing, the level design isn't quite as good as the original. There's a lot of things in this game that really annoy me. There's a lot of levels that are based mostly around luck rather than skill. But the game does still have its charm. And it does have a fairly nice variety of levels. There's certainly a lot more than in the first game. And I love the new structure of the game as well. The new single player mode really adds a lot to the experience. Even if the story is a little bit on the weak side. It's still a lot of fun and it's really cute and colourful. And as well as all the original party and mini games from the first game, they also included a whole load of new games as well. Unfortunately though, I've lost my memory card with my original save file, and to unlock the new games you actually have to play through all of the story mode to get the points. So I can't show you that in this video, but rest assured they're all really fun. So maybe I'm being a little harsh on Monkey Ball 2, I did really enjoy it at the time, it's just that when I go back to play it today, I always end up comparing it to the first game, which I just enjoy more in every regard. The thing that really lets it down for me is the fact that there's a lot of levels with really unnecessary obstacles. Basically a lot of the stages drop you down on a switch which speed everything up times two, but you can literally just turn around, move back a few steps to the back of the level and press a switch, which resets everything back to its normal speed and it just feels really, really pointless. And then there's stages like this, which are just sheer luck. And then there's some other stages, like this one, which just want to make me rip my hair out in frustration. It's not all bad news though. They really did improve on a lot of the minigames from the first game, and overall the presentation is a lot better. And it's also the first game in the series to include a built-in widescreen mode as well, which is actually quite rare for the GameCube, so I'm really glad they included that feature. Ready? Go. Go. Another thing that I love about the first two games is the amazing speedrun community. It's always fantastic to see what people are capable of in the game. 
completely breaking the levels and using physics to amazing effect. 25, yeah. Shouts yeah. to backups. Oh, let's go. And then we shortly after Super Monkey Ball 2 came out on the GameCube, there was Super Monkey Ball Deluxe for the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox. It didn't come out on the GameCube, I presume, because it's mostly just a remix of the first two games all put into one package. It does have some new levels that aren't in the original and they're quite fun to play, although I don't really think the designers knew exactly what direction to take the series. Some of them are like the original game, like Mazes, some of them are like Monkey Ball 2, and some of them are just weirdly open levels that you can kind of get lost in, so it's a little bit strange, but the game itself is really good. Unfortunately though, both the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox suffer a little bit in the gameplay department. And that's mostly because on the GameCube you've got this amazing analog stick that actually clicks into place using this sort of octagonal pattern. Whereas on the PS2 and the Xbox it's entirely smooth all the way around, which does make it a lot harder, especially if you're trying to go in a straight line. Because obviously on the GameCube you can just hold it straight up like that and it will lock into place but on the PS2 and the Xbox it's a little bit less precise. But the game itself is still really good as the Metacritic scores suggest. Another thing to pay attention to, if you've got an original Xbox, definitely get that version over the PS2 one. Sadly, the PS2 version has a lot worse frame rate compared to the GameCube and the Xbox games, and the resolution's actually worse as well, so only get this one if you haven't got any other choice. Definitely go for the Xbox Ready? version. Now this is a really interesting one, I know it's not exactly part of the Monkey Ball series, but it does have a Monkey Ball game in it. This is Sega Superstars for the iToy. And truth be told, I didn't know where my iToy was, and one literally turned up in the post about half an hour ago. So I haven't played it yet, but I'm definitely going to before this video goes live, so have a look at what I thought of it in the future. Right, here we go, I'm trying out Monkey Ball on the iToy. As you can see, I don't exactly have much space, but hopefully that doesn't stop me enjoying it. We'll see. Ready? Oh, wow. Go! Okay. Go forward? Okay, I'm not sure why, I'm not sure how to make it go forward, or why my hands are disappearing. Oh, okay, you have to put your arms down to make them go forward. Oh, this is really weird. It's making my arms ache as well. Oh. Surprisingly, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. Obviously, they wouldn't be able to do the same kind of levels as a normal Monkey Ball game, but... Whoa! Hey, pretty impressed by that. It's not too bad, actually. Hey, finally, a challenge. Let's see if I can get them bananas. Got two of them. Yo! I'm sure I didn't go through that, then. Perfect bonus! New record. So that was either great or it wasn't. Now on to the next game in the series, which is, like I said at the start, where the series really took a turn for the worst. This is Super Monkey Ball Adventure. And truth be told, I'd heard bad things about this game and I hadn't even played it until a few weeks ago. And I can see why a lot of people really hate this game. They, I know what they were trying to go for. They were trying to go for a 3D platformer. But of course, being a Super Monkey Ball game, it doesn't have a jump button, which just makes traversing the environments really, really awkward and frustrating. Mix in with that a really weak plot and missions that don't really make any sense. Even right at the start of the game, I was only two or three missions in, and I had absolutely no idea what I needed to do. I actually had to look it up on game FAQs just to get past the first few stages, so I really can't recommend the story mode to anyone. It does, however, also include a classic mode, which is supposed to harken back to the original games in the series, but unfortunately, once again, Traveller's Tales completely dropped the ball, and it doesn't play anything like the earlier games in the Monkey Ball series. 
I don't really know how they could get it so wrong, but they did. Apparently, it actually uses a physics engine that came from Crash Twin Sanity, which just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why they couldn't have used Sega's own engine, but in the end, this game is terrible. I'm really sorry to say it, and it does put a damper on the entire series for me. Just like the previous games in the series, this one also includes a series of mini-games. Unfortunately, as you probably guessed, they managed to bodge these as well. Even Monkey Target, which you wouldn't expect to be as bad as it is, but the physics are just completely broken. So the next game here, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, was a launch game for the Wii and of course I picked it up on day one, being a huge Super Monkey Ball fan that I was. I hadn't actually played Super Monkey Ball Adventure at the time so I didn't already know that the series had gone downhill at all. And to be honest, I absolutely love this game. I know it's not for everyone, they did change up some of the mechanics, they introduced a jump button and they introduced boss fights, which not everyone was a huge fan of, but I personally loved it. I really can't fault it at all, and as you can see up there, the um, HD version has just come out as well, and I will get to that in a minute. What I like so much about this game is the fact that it kind of went back to the structure of the first game, where it's just going through the levels one by one. They kept some of the story mode from Monkey Ball 2, and the graphics in this game, the sound, the music, everything about this game I love. The game has a very different feel to it compared to the earlier games. The inclusion of a jump button makes it feel a lot more like a standard platformer, and the fact that the whole game is controlled by turning the Wii Remote makes for a really interesting game. A lot of people say that the level designs aren't very memorable compared to Super Monkey Ball 1 and 2, but I actually disagree. I think the levels are really well made if you look at it from a platformer's point of view rather than a puzzle game. I feel like the levels all have a really nice flow to them. And I love the boss fights as well, especially this one at the end of the Sand World. It reminds me a lot of something like the original Sonic Adventure on the Dreamcast. One thing I don't like about this game though, which is something that made the original two games in the series really good, is the mini-games. Unfortunately, all of the mini-games on this are really simple. Somehow they even managed to mess up Monkey Target, which was a big disappointment to me at the time. But overall though, I still have to say this is one of my favourite games in the series, contrary to a lot of people's belief, but there you go. And this is technically the final game that came out in the Super Monkey Ball series on consoles. This is Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll. And if you saw at the start, it hasn't got a very good overall Metacritic score. So this game was actually based around the balance board, which of course was the very popular peripheral on the Wii that came with Wii Fit that everyone loved and Sega obviously tried to cash in on it with the Super Monkey Ball title. The game itself is a lot easier than the other games in the Monkey Ball series, and it is quite sad because most of the levels have guardrails up at the side, or they have a groove for the ball to go in, so I managed to play through almost the entire game without dying. But you have to think that this was made for a different audience than the original games. Of course, the original games were all based off an arcade game, which is for more hardcore gamers. So the original games in the series were really, really difficult, and they toned the difficulty down for this one. But I don't really think that's a mark against the game because of the kind of audience they were going for. 
I wasn't actually sure if I was going to be able to show any video of using the balance board, but thankfully I managed to find one just before I was ready to make this video live. And I actually had a lot of fun playing it this way, so enjoy. So I managed to find the balance board, but as you can see, I've only just got enough room to actually sit down in here, let alone stand up. So I've kind of made a little bit of space for it here, so let's see if we can play some monkey ball step and roll. So if I remember right, it's kind of like the iOS version where you've got, like you can see there, you've got an icon in the corner and that red dot is you moving around. So if you lean forward, then it rolls forward and you can sort of lean left and right to move the ball left and right as well. I remember I was so excited when this came out back in 2009, I think, 9 or 10, maybe a bit later than that, maybe 2011. But just the idea of actually moving your body to control where the ball goes, I just thought was a great idea. And although it is a bit awkward, it does control surprisingly okay. I don't really want to say well because it is really awkward. Especially because I'm at a kind of a weird angle. But yeah, I am glad they put these barriers up. I've seen a lot of reviews complain. Let's see if I can go back to get that. I've seen a lot of reviews complain about having the, oh my god, complain about having the barriers. <laughs> I actually, oh my god, there we go, finally. I actually feel like they're quite useful in this game. Oh, I completely missed that jump. Ooh, go back that way. This is even harder than the iToy version. Oh my god, I'm so off balance. Playing the game with the Wii Remote is a completely different experience. You need to play this game with the balance board to be able to appreciate what they were really going for with this. Ah. <laughs> no! Oh no, come on, go in there! I'm almost done. Go in there! Go, 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 go! Yes, one second left. I honestly, for what it is, really enjoy it. The balance board controls are really fun. And if you control it with the Wii Remote instead, which you can do, that actually increases the challenge by putting a lot of obstacles in the way. Unfortunately, it doesn't get around the easier level designs, but it does make it more fun to play. I especially like this level in the lava world. And one of the things that I think this game does really, really well, and that's the soundtrack. The soundtrack in this game is probably my favourite out of the entire series, and that also includes all of the uh, handheld games that I'm not covering in this episode. So there you go, this was Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll, a game that I don't think deserves all the hate that it gets. I really do quite like this one. And before we get onto Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD, like I mentioned at the start, I actually went last weekend to try and track down the other Monkey Ball arcade machine, Ticket Blitz. And I'm very happy to report that I did find it, and I was so, so excited. I got loads of footage from while I was there, so I'll just let this speak for itself. The arcade itself was about an hour away from where I live, and the day that we went there it actually had started storming, so by the time we had arrived the weather was actually quite bad, and I was kind of worried that the whole place would be closed, but thankfully that wasn't the case. When we first got inside I was so excited, I went round everywhere I could see but I couldn't find the machine anywhere. I was getting really really worried, until there it was in the corner. There it is! There it is! Oh my god, we found it! I got so excited I ran straight up to it and I must have put at least five or six quid in straight away.
So as you've probably noticed from this gameplay, it's very different to the original arcade game. Unlike that one in which you use the banana to actually tilt the floor, this one you're actually controlling the ball itself, using a giant rollerball that's built into the arcade machine. Unfortunately, I think a lot of kids had been playing this because it was really, it was really sticky and gross. <laughs> Hands are all sticky. <laughs> but it didn't stop me having a great time though. As you can see, it's a really interesting game. It actually plays very differently to a lot of the other Monkey Ball games. It's kind of strange that the camera's at a fixed angle in this one, and that kind of threw me off at first, but the more I played it, the better I got. And you get a certain amount of tickets for each banana that you manage to collect throughout the stage. And then at the end of the stage, you're greeted with this jackpot screen, where you can try and aim to get 500 bonus tickets. I tried that stage at least 10 times and I didn't manage to get inside, even though I hit all of the speed boosters, so I don't know if that was kind of a fix, but I still enjoyed it a lot. And now for the most recent game in the series, which is Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD. Super Monkey Ball! I actually only just got the Switch version through the post today and I got it for a really good price but up until this point I've been playing it on the Xbox One and I've been having an absolute blast. Like I said about the Wii version, it's one of my favourite games in the series. I know a lot of people don't like it but I absolutely love it and I think it's even more fun to play on the Xbox. I love the inclusion of Sonic the Hedgehog when you complete the entire game. You actually get to play through it as Sonic who can run faster, jump higher and just control better in general. To be honest, it feels more like a platformer than a Super Monkey Ball game, but that's not a bad thing in any means. I've really, really enjoyed playing this recently, and I also love some of the new things they've brought into this version of the game, like the time attack mode, where you can either play through the first world, the first four worlds, or all the worlds, and you actually get your score ranked against everyone else in the online leaderboards, which is just really fun, and I've been playing that quite a lot over the, over the few days. And I do plan on playing through it all again on the Switch very soon. World clear! Masayo Shirasaki was brought in as a director for the remake, after finishing production on Judgment. There was some fantastic news in this interview on Crunchyroll, he hopes one day to make a brand new entry in the series. I can't wait to see what they come up with. And just before we finish this video, you might have noticed this in the corner. I just wanted to bring this up before I finish it off, because I only found out about this the other day. This is a Super Monkey Ball Hot Wheels car from 2001, which is just amazing, look at that. I really didn't even know this existed, so I'm really excited to have it, and no, I'm not opening it up either, it's just going to sit up there on the shelf. 
So, in conclusion, in my personal opinion, I don't think the Monkey Ball series has gone downhill at all. Apart from this game, I'm writing this one out of the series, this game doesn't exist in my opinion. The rest of the series is fantastic. I absolutely love every single entry in the series for different reasons. Yes, even Super Monkey Ball 2, even though I get really frustrated with it, I do really enjoy it. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching part one. Like I said at the start, stay tuned for part two because I've got loads more to cover. Seriously, there's an insane amount of things to cover in part two. I've found out some really, really cool stuff. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of the Monkey Ball series as a whole. Let me know what your favourite game in the series is, and let me know where you'd like Sega to take it in the future. That's it for this episode, I'll see you all next week for the next one. Goodbye!